happy Sabbath, everyone. All right, shall we open up with a silent word of prayer? Amen. Okay, happy Sabbath once again. Um, and as we are um, all familiar with, we are we are coming up to this to this great trial that is that is to um, be before us here in this this um, this ten period. And the Lord has been showing us that as the fifth day, from the fifth day, fourth month to mid to midway, this is all just a, an opening up of the experience that we're going to have at at midway, and as midway is the time of the end, and the Lord declares the end from the beginning, we have the time of the end in the, the beginning as well. So this whole period is illustrating this time of the end experience. Amen. So we are going to see the the elements of the time of the end of 1798 and 1989 being illustrated from the fifth day fourth month all the way down to midway so as we see these things that transpire in the in the nation and in the world we are to see how these things are applied prophetically to us so that we can know how to walk step by step with christ amen so in 1798 who came up against whom Amen. The South came up against the North. And in the South coming up against North, it was illustrating Satan pushing against Christ. Amen. But on here on Earth, the representation that we have to illustrate that same battle, we had Biden pushing against um, Trump or the Democrats pushing against the Republicans. Amen. So illustrating that even um, on the Earth is showing this, that it was showing 1798 all over again. But all of this is to illustrate what is happening within our hearts. So as we are walking step by step with Christ, we are to see that our own sinful um, and filthy incl inclinations that are and our filthy thoughts starting to push up against um, the principles and the and the um, amen, the right thoughts or the higher powers that God has placed within us. Amen. amen. But we have a promise, do we not? Because 1989 says that, that who came back as a whirlwind? Amen. Amen. So we have a promise that Christ will come back as a whirlwind if we stand steadfast upon these, these um, truths. Amen? Amen. Amen. And in doing so, his, his glory may be manifest even more um, tenfold. Amen. Go ahead, Quinta. I was just thinking that's um, the thing the North and South is going against each other is just the gospel. It's um, the crushing of the head and the bruising of the heel. Amen. Yeah. Amen. It is. It's, it's exactly that. So at every point, we are to see these manifestations taking place externally and internally, in, within, internally within our own hearts. Amen. And, and manifests also in internally in our families, in our churches, so on and so forth. Amen. So um, we have to see these same things um, illustrated in God's word, no matter where we go, because the whole Bible is speaking about this great controversy. And we have these we have these two kingdoms. We have these two these. These two, yes, amen. These two systems that are worn against one another. And Daniel, Daniel 8 and Daniel 11, 
that the Lord shed great light upon, the Lord is showing us these, these, I'm going to just, I'm going to just say it, these two horns. Amen. These what? Opposing Amen. These opposing forces. So we have these, these horns that are worn against one another from the beginning all the way to the end, from 1798 all the way to 1989, from 1989 all the way to the, um, to the end of the world. Because 1989 is only illustrating this beginning portion of what goes on till um, Christ literally comes as a whirlwind. Amen? Okay. So, like I said, we have these, these horns. We have the horns of the, um, of the ram and the horns of the he-goat. Amen? And with the he-goat, he has what kind of horn? A notable horn. A notable horn. Amen. And... The Lord is teaching us from this notable horn. He has there's two aspects of it, because in the Bible we are to see Christ and whom? Satan. Satan. So this notable horn, it comes up and it destroys these two horns. And who is this illustration of this of this notable horn in our time? Biden. Biden. So Biden came and he he came up against these two horns and these two horns we have in. um. Who do we make this application to in our time as well? These two horns that were from the ram. The yes, the, yeah, amen. The previous administration. And the Lord has shown us that, that in this previous administration, it was still holding up, to, holding up to the law that God has given us, right? Holding fast unto the, um, the Constitution, amen. But to come up, but the, the Bible tells us that this notable horn comes up how? It comes up breaking them. Amen. It comes up in treachery. So to break these, um, this constitution. So if it comes up in treachery, how must it go down? In treachery. So as it goes down in treachery, the Lord is showing us that he's going to bring, he's going to break this horn. But if he's, he's going to break this horn and this horn represents both Christ and Satan, Christ is going to use that the same um, implementations that 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 he used to bring him down as well. Amen. OK, so um, a symbol that the Lord has given us was in with Abimelech. Amen. And he showed us that that as Abimelech came up in treachery, he also came down in treachery. So he's showing us how these two horns were um, and I'm not speaking about the two horns of the ram. I'm speaking about this, this, the horn of Abimelech and this horn that the Lord raises up to take down Abimelech. How these two horns are going to war against one another, and one is going to break the other. Amen. All right. So, beginning in Judges nine and verse eight, it says the trees went forth on a time to appoint a king over them, and I'm sorry. Oh, yes. Amen. Anoint. Anoint. Not a point. Um, <clears throat> on a time to anoint a king over them. And they said unto the olive tree, reign over us. So these trees being men who they wanted a man to reign over them. Amen. It says, but the olive tree said unto them, should I leave my fatness wherewith my wherewith by me? They honor God and man and go to be promoted over the trees. And the trees said to the fig tree, come thou and reign over us. But the fig tree said unto them, should I, should I forsake my sweetness and my good fruit and go to be promoted over the trees? Then said the trees unto the vine, come thou and reign over us. And the vine said unto them, should I leave my wine wherewith cherith, cherith God and man and go to be promoted over the trees? Then said all the trees unto the bramble, come thou. And reign over us. And the bramble said unto the trees, If in truth ye anoint me king over you, then come and put your trust in my shadow. And if not, let fire come out of the bramble and devour the cedars of Lebanon. So these, these men came up to this bramble, which we know is Abimelech, which we know is typifying um, Biden, and wants this, this, this man to reign over them. And... In a conversation that my brother and I had with, um, with actually many people um, in the past, they say that they, they have to choose between the two, the two evils. They have to choose the lesser out of these two evils. But 
in in their ignorance they don't even know what they're what what they're what they're saying because because of the 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 manipulation that satan has put upon them they see christ as their enemy and the the principles that he is putting forth as against them and then choosing satan to reign over them and choosing this man who is only going to uplift licentiousness and atheism but let us let us continue da 737 paragraph 6 it says thus and thus by choosing a heathen ruler the jewish nation had withdrawn from from the theocracy they had rejected god as their king henceforth they had they had no deliverer they had no king but caesar so Israel in the time of Christ, they chose a man to reign over them. Israel in the time of, of, of Samuel, they chose a man to reign over, the, over, the, over them. So even Israel in our time, we're, we are also choosing a man to reign over us. But, but the Lord always has a, 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 a prophet to, to speak up against these, these things and speak against the uh, the abominations that these that this nation is going to is going forward into. So, continuing on, PP six thirty six paragraph one says, "In Saul, God had given to Israel a king after their own heart." So, who is who is Biden? Who, Amen. Biden is a king after the the heart of 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 the people in this nation. So, all the the violence and all the 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 lawlessness that was going on last year they put one who would who would turn a blind eye to these things who would do just like Eli with it with their children and and allow this 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 darkness to continue to reign um next bowl says therefore God gave them such a king as they desired one whose character was a reflection of their own their hearts were not in submission to God and, and their king also was unsubdued by divine grace. Under the rule of this king, they would obtain the experience necessary in order that they might see their error and return to their allegiance to God. First Samuel 2, verses um, 6 to 10. Can I have a reader for these, for these five verses? down to the grave and bringeth up. The Lord maketh poor and maketh rich. He bringeth low and lifteth up. He raises up the poor out of the dust and lifteth up the beggar from the dunghill to set them among princes and to make them inherit the throne of glory. For the pillars of the earth are the Lord's and he hath set the world upon them. He will keep the feet of his saints and the wicked shall be silent in darkness for by strength shall no man prevail the adversaries of the Lord shall be broken to pieces out of heaven shall he thunder upon them the Lord shall judge at the ends of the earth and he sh shall give strength unto his king and exalt the horn of his anointing okay Daniel 2 and um Daniel 2, 21 and 22, and Proverbs tells us that the Lord, he sets up kings and he takes down kings and says that by him kings reign and, and I think it says emperor's decree decrees or, or some, something like of, of that nature. So Samuel is, is, is saying the same thing. It's the Lord, he killeth and he maketh alive. He's the one who puts, um, puts men in authority and he's the one who who takes them down. But keep in mind verse verse 10. He says the adversaries of the Lord shall be broken to pieces. So keep that keep that thought in mind as we continue on. Now Isaiah 34 verse 1 to 8. Let me get a, a reader for that. Come here ye nations to hear and hearken ye people. Let the earth hear and all that is therein the world and all things that come forth of it. For the, exum the exhumation of the Lord is upon all nations, and his fury upon all their armies. He 
He hath utterly destroyed them. He hath delivered them to the slaughter. Their slain also shall be cast out, and their stink shall come up out of their carcasses, and the mountains shall be melted with their blood. And all of the hosts of heaven shall be dissolved, and the heavens shall be rolled together as a scroll. And all their hosts shall fall down as the leaf falls off from the vine, and as a falling fig from the fig tree. For my sword shall be bathed in heaven. Behold, it shall come down upon Idumea and upon the people of my curse to judgment. The sword of the Lord is filled with blood. It is made fat with fatness and with the blood of lambs and goats. And, the, and with the fat of the kidneys of rams. For the Lord hath a sacrifice in Basra and a great slaughter in the land of Idumea. And the unicorn shall come down with them, and the bullocks with the bulls, and their land shall be soaked with blood, and their dust made fat with fatness. For it is the day of the Lord's vengeance, and the year of the contentions, for the controversy of Zion. Okay. So, so this is the, this period, is the type of the day, it's the day of the Lord. So, and the Lord says that in verse 7, it says, and the unicorns shall come down with them. So a unicorn has how many, how many horns? One. one horn. It has one notable horn. So, so this unicorn, it shall, it says that it shall do what? It said it shall come down. It shall be broken. And in the, in this, in this day of the Lord time period, this unicorn shall be brought down. Well, we said this is 1998 and 1989. Okay. But let's, let's continue on. Psalm 74, 75, verse 4. It says, I said unto the fools, deal not foolishly, and, and to do, and to the wicked, lift not, lift not up the horn. So, what comes to mind when, when, when it says, um, deal not foolishly? Sodom. Because Lot said, do not so wickedly. Do not this, 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 this this wickedness or this foolishness before the, before the Lord. So the men of Sodom, they were also lifting up this, this horn, this horn of wickedness. They were lifting this up before, um, before God, just like um, the Tower of Babel as well. They were lifting up themselves before, before God, saying that they will not fall by, this, um, by the Lord's this destruction. Verse 5, lift not Lift not up your horn on high, speak not with a stiff neck, for promotion cometh neither from, from the east, nor from the west, nor from the south. But God is the judge, and he putteth down one and setteth up another. So he's going to take down this horn, he's going to lift up um, one of his own choosing, just like he took down Saul and lift up one um, of his own heart. Psalms 92 and verse 10 he says, But my horn... Shall thou exalt like the horn of an unicorn? I shall be anointed with fresh oil. First Samuel verse um, two verse ten says, "The adversaries of the Lord shall be broken to pieces. Out of out of heaven shall shall he thunder upon them. The Lord shall judge the ends of the earth, and he shall give strength unto his king and exalt the horn of his anointed." So this word horn in um first Samuel first Samuel two it means to to push or to means to push to shoot out to gore or to shine so this horn as as we are saying that is it is an illustration of seventeen eight um seventeen ninety eight and nineteen eighty nine that they'll push just like in daniel eleven verse forty you you have a hand Amen. So the men said to Lot, who may be just? 
Amen. Amen. Yes. Setting them up. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's nice. Oh, yes. So Daniel 1140 is illustrating this, this same, the same pushing is showing this, the bringing down of, of, of one and setting up the, the, the Lord's um, anointed horn. Somebody had a comment? But Daniel 8, verse 5 to 8, and it says, And as I was considering, behold, and he go came from the west and on the face of, of the whole earth, and touched not the ground, and the goat had a notable horn between his eyes. And he came to the ram that had two horns, which, which I had seen standing before the river, and, the ran, un and, and ran unto him. In the fury of his power, and I saw him come close unto the ram, and he moved with collar against him, and smote the ram, and brake his two horns, and there was no power in the ram to stand before him, and he but he cast him down to the ground and stamped and stamped upon him, and there was none that could deliver the ram out of his out of his hand. Therefore the he goat waxed very great, and when he was strong. The, the great horn was broken and and for it and for it came up four notable ones toward the four winds of heaven. So we know this is this is um, this is Alexander. This is Biden who is going to be broken and replaced with um, with four. Go ahead. Mm hmm. Yeah, that's that's very interesting. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Amen. <laughs> okay. Let's um move on under Ichabod. Um, Judges 9 verses 22 to 27. So can I have a reader for, for these verses? Judges 9, 22 to 27. And Abimelech, reigned, and Abimelech had reigned three years over Israel. Then God sent an evil spirit between Abimelech and the men of Shechem. And the men of Shechem dealt treacherously with Abimelech. That the cruelty done to the three score and ten sons of Zerubbabel might come. And their blood be laid upon Abimelech, their brother, which slew him, and upon the men of Shechem, which aided him in killing in the killing of his brethren. And the men of Shechem set liars in wait for him in the top of the mountain, and they robbed all that came along that way by them. And it was told Abimelech. Okay, pause right there. So, when Abimelech reigned three years, then, and then the Lord sent an evil spirit, and we know that this is not. Not um, in our time, literal three years, a, a, a little three year time period, because the same is said about Alexander, that when he was great, then um, he was he was broken because Alexander, he took 20 years and he until he he. Un no, it wasn't his um, his. Um, what's the word I'm looking? Yes, his conquest. 10 or 13. 10 or 13? OK. What was the, the 20? I um, must have something mixed up in my mind about the 20, about 20 years with, with, with Alexander. But either way, either way. It, okay. So, so, yeah, so we know it's not dealing with literal time. But we know that the Bible teaches that when and then is, is, is at this same point. So... So, so when his, his reign, when his reign is, is, when Abimelech's reign is these three years, then we have this, this evil spirit. Amen. This evil spirit comes to bring in confusion, to bring in discord and, and 
Amen. Strife. And we'll see what, what this evil spirit also, also brings. But go ahead. Oh. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. And Gael the son of Eber came with his brethren and went over to Shechem, and the men of Shechem put their confidence in him. And they went out into the field and gathered their vineyards and showed the grapes and made merry and went into the house of their God and did eat and drink and cursed the Lord. Okay. So now the Bible teaches us that the root of this word evil is H7489. It, was, it means to breaking in pieces. So this evil spirit that is, that is brought into the camp of Abimelech, it's breaking in pieces his, his kingdom. Or it is to break in pieces, to break, to, to break down, displease, and to... Yes, and to bring evil in, in, their, in, their, um, in their camp. So we are not to think it strange when we see ones rising up, coming up in, in, in their ranks that are now bringing a, a division amongst, amongst the camp. Go ahead. Amen. Yes. What I was getting from it is that they were that they're going to um, that they're going to rob him of his. They're going to rob someone's going to rob Biden and his administration of their um, of their name of of their not their name literally, but the the position and the work that they're that they're that they're going to be doing. That's going to bring about their 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 um their fall their own destruction but that is something to to look into the 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 two thoughts of the good samaritan and um judges 9 but isaiah 47 verse 1 to 3 says come down and sit in the dust o virgin daughter of babylon sit on the ground there is no throne o daughter of the chaldeans for thou shalt no more be called tender and delicate. Take the millstones and grind and grind meal. Uncover thy locks, make bare thy leg, uncover thy thigh, pass over the rivers. Thy nakedness shall shall be uncovered, yea, the shame shall be seen. I will take vengeance, and I will not meet thee, meet thee as a man. So the Lord is coming with all of his vengeance. All his glory. Amen. With all of his glory. And he's going to and he's going to strip them of all the, the lies and the fig leaves that they, have, that, that they have placed before them to go about and do this treachery. So as they came up in, 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 in this treachery and in these, these breaking of, of the Constitution, the Lord is going to rob them and show them how filthy and, and, and wretched that they truly are and expose them for, for the, the great abominations that they're truly doing in these in these places um, of, of authority. Psalms 89, verse 38 to 45, says, But thou hast cast off and, and abhorred. Thou hast been wroth with thine anointed. Thou hast made void the covenant of, of thy servant. Thou hast profaned his crown by casting it to the ground. These are the very things that, amen, these are the things that they're doing. We know not what are in all these executive orders that he's signing. We don't know what, what, what is planning in, 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 um, in, in their closet or in their secret chamber. But the Lord, like Ezekiel, would open these things up to God's people and expose them for, for the dragons that they, that they really are. It says, Thou hast broken down, broken down all the hedges. Thou hast brought his strongholds to ruin. All that passed by, by the way spoiled him. He is, he is a reproach to his neighbors. And, 
And if you go back to the root meaning of, of evil, it, it also means to spoil. So all that they were doing, it says all that passed by the way of them, they were doing evil unto them. It says he is a reproach to his neighbors. Thou hast set up the, the right hand of, of his adversary. Thou hast made all his enemies to, to rejoice. Thou hast also turned the edge of his sword and hast not made him to stand in the battle. Thou hast made all his glory to cease and cast his throne down to the ground. The day of his use hast thou shortened. Thou hast covered him with shame. So he would, he would also be um, covered with shame. For he, has, he tried to trample upon upon his brethren so he too will be trampled upon job 19 can i have a reader for verses 6 to 10 know now that god hath overthrown me and hath compassed me with his neck behold i cry out of wrong but i am not heard i cry aloud but there is no judgment he hath fenced up my way that i cannot pass and he hath set darkness in my path he hath stripped me of my glory and hath taken the crown from my head he Amen. Yet he's stripped and they're removed. Now he's just left on thorns. Have a reader for the for the next quotes. The present is a time of overwhelming interest to all living. Rulers and statesmen, men who occupy positions of trust and authority, thinking men and women of all classes, have their attention fixed upon the events taking place about us. They are watching the strained, restless relations that exist among the nations. They observe the intensity that is taking possession of every earthly element, and they recognize that something great and decisive is about to take place. That the world is on the very is on the verge of a stupendous crisis. Angels are now restraining the winds of strife, that they may not blow until the world shall be warned of its coming doom. But a storm is gathering, ready to burst burst upon the earth. And when God shall bid His angels loose the winds, there will be such a scene of strife as no pen can picture. Okay, pause right there. So. I don't fully know what the what the four means um means at this at this point but we have these we have these four horns that are here and then we also have the four winds that are also that are also partially going to be let loose and I say partially because the Lord says that if it if um that it will be restrained to not um, hinder the work of the of the sealing message. So at so yes, as we can see this storm that is about to gather, we know that the Lord is is for a time going to let these um, these four winds loose, and and allow Satan to do his work. Of, of bringing strife and war and bloodshed upon um, upon this nation. Go ahead. Does this mean Satan uh, being his helper? Yes. Yes, because I'm trying to remember the the quote. Yes, yes, he's gathering the harvest of, of souls. But there's is a if I can remember it, I'll I'll. I'll share it with you, but it's, it's, it says something that that the Lord allows these these things to happen so that it's, it's one that his that his people may shine bright, but then also that that Satan may may gather his his elect or some something like that. I don't remember exactly how it goes, but. Yes, amen. Yeah. Yes. So 
Amen. So we have this net and Satan casts his net and Christ also casts his net as well. So they're both doing this, this, this gathering. For we have this little time of peace and in the little time of peace, it's a, it's a type of, of heaven, of entering into the kingdom for these thousand years. So at the end of the world, as Ellen White says, it's the, it's the harvest that Satan has his harvest and Christ also has his harvest as well. Praise God. Continue. Last quote. The Bible and the Bible only gives a correct view of these things. Here are revealed the great final scenes in the history of our world, events that already are casting their shadows before, the sound of their approach causing the earth to tremble and men's hearts them for fear. Amen. So we will see these very same things. That some will will shine bright in this time and some their hearts will fear because they did not hold on to the to the promises and the light that the Lord has shown us. The Lord has given us many evidences of what is going to happen and what is going to take place. And the Lord says he shows us these things that are come to pass so that when they come to pass, we might what? We might believe. We might be strengthened by these, by these things. So Ezekiel 2, 23, verse 25 to 29, it says, And I will set my jealousy against thee, and they shall deal furiously with thee. They shall take away thy, thy nose and thine ears, and thy remnant shall fall by the sword. They shall take thy sons and thy daughters, and thy residue shall be devoured by fire. This, this, is, um, this is Alexander. For the kingdom didn't go to what? None of his posterity. So Ezekiel is saying the same thing. It is, it is his sons, his daughters, all of them. None of them um, received the throne. So Biden, none of his, his family, not his literal family, but those in his camp may not receive any of may not receive the throne either all will be devoured by this by this fire verse 26 they shall all they shall also strip thee out of thy clothes and take away thy fair jewels thus will i make thy lewdness to cease from thee and thy whoredoms brought from from the land of egypt so that thou shalt not lift up thine eyes unto them nor remember egypt any more for thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I will deliver thee into the hand of them whom thou hatest, into the hand of them from, from whom thy mind is alienated. And they shall deal with thee hatefully, and shall take away all, their, all thy labor, and shall leave thee naked and bare, and the, and the nakedness of thy whoredom shall be discovered, both thy lewdness and thy whoredoms. And it shall come to pass, in Zechariah 13, Come to pass in that day, saith the Lord of hosts, that I will cut off the names of, of the idols out of the land, and they shall no more be remembered. So the Lord is going gonna, is gonna to slay these men in, in um, Revelation 11, verse 13. For it was 7,000 that were slain of men, and it was the names of, of men that were slain. And these men are these idols for... For when they choose these men to reign over them, they're choosing these idols. They're choosing this, this lewdness, this licentiousness. And they want Caesar or Barabbas in, in place of Christ. And also I will cause the prophets and the unclean spirits to pass out of the land. And it shall come to pass that when... And he shall yet prophesy, then his father and his mother that begat him shall say unto him, Thou shalt not live, for thou speakest lies in the name of the Lord. And his father and his mother that begat him shall thrust him through when he proph um, prophesieth. And it shall come to pass in that day that the prophet shall be ashamed every one of his visions. When he hath um, prophesied, neither shall they wear a rough garment to deceive. But he shall say, I am no prophet. I am no husband, I am a husbandman, for, for man taught me to keep cattle from my youth, and one shall say unto him, What are these wounds in thine hands? Then he shall answer, Those which 
which I was wounded in the house of my friends. Okay, we soon. Oh, go on. Um, I just thought about it with the rough garment, um, mm -hmm. wearing it to deceive. Um, Jacob wore something on his arm to impersonate Esau. Um, and it was like Esau, you know, he he's more hairy, he's more rough. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, and by that. Um, by that garment, he basically stole the birthright. So his people that are wearing the, the um, rough right. garment, they're stealing. Yes, like Mario said, they have on a disguise. They're disguising themselves to go about in this, this wicked act. What do you say, Wes? Yeah, but not, yeah. It's the same thing with Abraham. Abraham didn't wait on the Lord, and he went about it in his own means. So Jacob did the, the very same thing. He went about it in his own means to take the, the birthright. Yeah, that is one view. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So Biden, I know this verse is um, showing showing the cross, but this this shows as well this shows as well all those who who fall who fall who fall by the hands of their friends as well. So now, um, so now when you read. Um, with when when G -G -G Gail c came up, he was a friend, friend of um, Amen, mm -hmm. and then he went and and, and uh, yes, yes, yes. Gail, his own friend, came up and and wounded him. Abimelech, yeah. Yes, wounded Ab Abimelech. So. Yes. Like you say, so for Christ, then what are the wounds in Saint Paul? And and then if you go back, then what are the wounds in the church of Saint Paul? But she was also wounded. She was yeah. wounded and they had all the wounds in her hand. But they all all yeah. those who take on Christ must receive this wound. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 yeah, Egypt you could say that he was going through his hand. Yeah. The broken knee. Okay. GEP 189 paragraph 1. So now we have this um this illustration of Alexander and I think we should we should read this this chapter pertaining to Alexander because it gives a the timeline of what what is happening in in um in this period before this this four these four horns are are brought up. And how they war against one another and how their strife is, is taking place. But it says, The death of Alexander left 36 able generals, most of whom were with the army, of, with the army at Babylon, while others were stationed as governors at pivotal points in the empire. The first act of the, of the new government was an effort to secure the, the stability of the empire. By appointing these generals to be governors and of the various provisions or districts, the ablest generals to the most important provinces, of course, each one with full military power in his province or district. So when this when this when the Lord brings us evil spirit, this is gonna bring about a, a new government. So a new government is going to
a new government is going to be brought out from there onward. And we'll see um, others that are going to be appointed to appointed and stationed over different um, um, aspects of this of this new government. Okay, let's jump over Zechariah um, 13. Read the bold of um, antiquities of, of the Jews, which is FJAJ. It says, now, now it happened that there had come to them a man of authority, one Gale, that sojourned with them, having, an armed, having his armed men and his king's men with him. So the Shechemites desired that he would allow them a guard doing during their vintage, whereupon he accepted of their desires. And so the people went out and gale with them at the head of, of his, of his soldier, soldiery, soldiery. So they gathered their fruit with safety. And when they were a, at, thank you. And when they were at supper in several companies, they then ventured to curse Abimelech openly. And the magistrates laid ambushes in places about the city and caught and caught many of Abimelech's followers followers and destroyed them. So at this 10, where we like I said with this new government, we'll have new magistrates. Amen. Yes, and uh, the meaning of magistrate, it says a public civil officer invested with the executive government or some branch of it. In this sense, a king is the highest or first magistrate. It says as is the president of the United States. So we'll see that, that as, as Gale was brought up to, to war against um, war against Abimelech, we'll see one that is coming up in this um, that's going to come up in the 10, one of the, one in the, the, in the civil office or one that's, um, in the, in the same branch of it, uh, executive branch. Thank you. One that's in the same executive branch that's going to come up against, um, Abimelech. You got a hand? Yes, they did. Yeah, Governor amen. A new, new set of rules, amen. Roman. Amen. Amen. And and you could even see them trying to implement this very same thing now, where they tried to impeach a president that wasn't even in, in office. Um, anymore, and, and the of, uh, yes, and the mandation of of this vaccine, all in the all in the name of safety, all in the name of of peace. But I pray that these 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 thoughts were clear, and I pray that um, that as we see these things, that our hearts may 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 bring back these things to our remembrance that we. That we may may not fail, and and fail at standing firm upon the Lord's principles. But if there's no other comments or thoughts. Shall we close with a word of prayer? Heavenly Father, we thank you, dear Lord, for the light that you're shedding upon us. And Lord, as these things are are building to its to its climax, Lord, I pray that you may continue to shed even more light and evidences upon upon the truths that you've given unto us, that we may know for surety what we are to do and be able to read the signs that are before us that we may go in, in the right way. Please lead us, Lord, where you have us to be. And I pray that, that we may see your workings within our hearts most of all, that we may not fight against you, that we may not rise up, but that we may humble ourselves 
and, and lay, our, lay our, ourselves upon the cross. Help us in this Sabbath day, and I pray that you may forgive us, Lord, for all of our wrongs and, and, and in dishonor you, dishonoring you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.